Hey, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to recover the firmware from your Tanix TX3 Mini. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so for those of you that have got a, uh, a Tanix TX3 Mini, or derivatives of that, which runs on the uh, Amologic S905W chip, these boxes can be uh, brilliant little reliable units, but sometimes they get a little bit crazy and they have problems with them, so you need to either reset them or upgrade the firmware, or maybe it's an application you've installed which has corrupted the box. Now, in most instances, there's a reset button on the bottom that you can go through a procedure, which I've uh, put in a link up here. And you can go through and you can normally recover it back to its factory defaults. But if for some reason that isn't working, then what you'll probably need to do is to reflash the firmware. Now don't be frightened, it's uh, relatively straightforward and you only need a few relatively basic tools and a little bit of know-how to get the job done. Now, hopefully if you follow this video, you should be able to get it done pretty easily. Now the things that you will need is a USB A to A cable. Uh, make sure it's a data enabled cable. Now I was very fortunate that I've recently done a review of a external hard drive which is the Silicon Power A60, which as luck would have it, actually had one of these cables in it to allow me to upgrade my Titanix box. So USB A to A cable you definitely will need. You'll need something to uh, press in the reset button. Now I'm gonna use a iPhone reset tool, but a cocktail stick or anything like that should do the job just as well. Now in some instances you may not actually need to do this, you may be able to flash the firmware without pressing in the button to uh, initialize it, but depending on your setup and how badly corrupted it is, you may or may not need it. So have one of those handy just in case. Now obviously you'll need your Tanix TX3 mini box. You'll need a laptop or computer with a suitable USB 2 or USB 3 port. Now one thing I will mention with this is when you're doing this, try not to use the USB ports or pass-through ports or hub ports if, if you possibly can avoid it. Ideally, you want to plug into the USBs that are actually on the back of the computer or uh, one of the main ports on your laptop or tablet. Now, a reason for this, I'm not entirely sure how it works, but somehow going through a, an additional connector or a, like a daisy chain, there does seem to be some sort of corruption, which I have found uh, trying to do it on a, a PC from the front-mounted USBs and the upgrade certainly wouldn't work. I plug it into the back and it worked first time. So I thought I'd share that just to make sure that if you are getting any problems, um, then obviously that is possibly the reason why you're getting it. Now there are links to uh, downloads, etc., which I've used for this. I'll supply them in the comments section below. Um, there was various websites which were helpful. There was uh, China Review Products or ChinaGadgetReview.com, I think it was, and MXQ Project and a few others which I will link in the description below so you can get all the downloads and all the necessary software. Now speaking of which, the main piece of software you will need is the Amologic burning tool, uh, the USB burning tool. Now there are different versions of this. Um, some of the older versions don't work particularly well with Windows 8 and above. I'm using Windows 10 so I've gone for the version 2.0.8 which uh, hasn't had any problems. So I would advise really if you can try and get hold of the latest version, but if not, uh, MXQ Project and some others have got links to slightly older versions if you, uh, if you feel more comfortable with using older computers. So um, another thing you will need as well is obviously the original firmware that came with the Tanex TX3 Mini or the device you're trying to use this with. It's similar for pretty much all the Amalogic devices, but just make sure that you've got the correct firmware for your device. Uh, you can get these from um, www.tanex-box.com. Um, they're the people who make the Tanex boxes, uh, but there are, again, other links in the description below where you can get your ROMs for, or from, rather. So let's get straight into the setup. Now, once you've downloaded the software, I'd suggest putting it into a folder on your desktop so you know where it all is. Uh, I've got one on this one called Tanex Firmware, which pretty much says what it is. And in the folder, I've got the uh, extracted version of the USB burning tool, 2.0.8. So if we go into that, and there's a setup application. So with this, if you uh, right click on it and choose run as administrator,
and then we'll just go through the setup process. Now this setup process will actually install a uh, additional USB driver for connection. So look out for that as well. Um, I'm choosing to create a desktop, option, uh, desktop icon just for ease of use, so you don't have to if you don't want to. And we'll click on install, and it's going to transfer all the files over into the uh, into the destination folder. And like I said, you don't have to do it there. You can install it wherever you want. I'm just doing this using the default settings just to uh, make my life easier. And then we enter this, the uh, device driver installation wizard. Now this is going to install the USB driver. If you're, uh, if you're wanting to remove this after you've uh, used the tool, if you go into add remove programs, there are actually two listings, one for the Amalogic software and one for the USB uh, driver. So you can install them separately if you wish. So that's installed the World Cup driver as they call it. And that's pretty much the setup done. Okay, so we can close that now. So now we've got on the desktop, we've got the USB uh, burning tool option. So right click on that and choose run as administrator. I don't think you actually have to do that, but I'm doing it just to uh, be on the safe side. Now, when the application first opens up, you'll notice that it is actually in Chinese. Now, if you go to the uh, second tab at the top and click on it, you can go down and you can choose English, which will make things a lot easier if you're English or read English. So the next thing to do is to choose your ROM that you wish to flash to the device. So click on file, then import image, and then navigate to wherever you've uh, downloaded your Tanix TX3 mini firmware image to. Now in this instance, it's on my desktop folder in the Tanix firmware, but again, uh, this could be in your downloads folder or wherever, just put it somewhere where it's nice and easy for you to find. So once you've got the file, it'll now check the image to make sure the image is okay and it's downloaded, it's not corrupted or anything. Um, this takes a little while to do, so just uh, bear with it. Now in the meantime, you can get your other items ready. So obviously you need your Tanix box, your uh, reset pin or key or whatever you want to use, and your USB A to A cable. Now for me personally, I'm going to plug the USB in first of all. Now there are two USB ports. If when you're doing this, if it doesn't work the first time, just unplug it and plug it into a separate port and you should find it does the job. Now it's quite tricky to do because you need to actually hold the pin in the reset position at the same time as plugging all this in. So uh, for me, if I push the pin in and hold it like that, then I can plug in the other cable like that, if you kind of get what I mean. But anyway. Right, so it's uh, it's found, or it's, it's got the, uh, the image prepared. So first thing you do is click, it's click start before you plug in your device. So now it's ready to accept the USB cable. So you don't need any power to your Tanx box. Uh, the power will be supplied via the USB port. Now when you plug in, you should hear the uh, USB noise to say it's connected and you're waiting for a device status. Now I've got nothing on there at the moment. So let's unplug that USB and I'll plug it into the other port. And that time we got the, uh, got the signal. So once you started doing that, if you have got the button pressed in, you can release it after you've heard the USB noises, because that means it's connected and it's doing uh, the transfer. Now on the screen, both on the Tanix box, you should get the, the boot logo come up. You may or may not get that depending on which version of the firmware you're uploading or your Tanix box, etc., etc. Uh, mine has, but yours may not, but it doesn't make any difference. As long as the status bar is moving along the top and progressing. Now again, if you do get any errors while the, uh, the process bar is going across, it's more than likely going to be to, due to either your USB cable plugged into the wrong port or it needs to be plugged into a different port. So again, just to keep on plugging in until, until it starts doing the, uh, the download. Now this will take a little while, so we'll probably uh, fast forward through this bit. Okay, so when the uh, burning process is finished, you should get a message saying 100% burning successfully. 
and you'll probably get a, a message in the bottom uh, again with the device hub number, the time, result, etc. etc. So that's it, you're pretty much done. All you need to do now is to disconnect the USB cable from your Tanex box. So that's the Tanex box side of it done, and now you can click on stop, and that stops the USB burn in tool running, and then you can close the application and it uninstalls the driver or at least shuts down the driver so you can carry on using your device as normal. So hopefully now when you plug in the USB, uh, sorry, when you plug in the power and the HDMI back to your Tanex box, it will be in the factory condition as it basically came to you out of the box. Although depending on which firmware you've installed on it, you may be on a slightly newer version. Um, it's definitely worth recommending when it's all booted up go into the settings and check for the latest version just to make sure you've got the latest software. Anyway, that's been how to flash the uh, firmware onto a TX3 Mini from the Analogic Burn tool. All the links for the stuff I've used is gonna be in the description below, so make sure you check that out. If you've got any questions, then please put them in the comments section below and I'll try and answer them as uh, best as I can. Although you will find some fantastic information and guidance from, again, from the links that I'm gonna put in the description. So, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and this has been How To Reflash the TX3 Mini. Thanks for watching.